All right, guys, we've got an incoming Battletech question here. Fritz, how does infantry stand up against mechs in Battletech? So let's look at this perspective in terms of approaching war games. Battletech is a little bit unique in that the range of military tech is massive. You can play the game just utilizing mechs, and for a long time that's how I played Battletech. But then you can jump into combined arms, where literally you have, of course, mechs being king, dominating the battlefield, very, pow very, very powerful, but at the same time, tanks, missile carriers, artillery, infantry, air support, um, a lot of different military units acting in unison. And uh, in the narrative, certainly the battle mech is the, the pinnacle of technology, but infantry have a role to fill. And depending on the location of the planet and the resources, there might not be any mechs present at all. It might just be vehicles in infantry, and there's an invasion of mechs, and that's what you're going against. This creates something interesting in Battletech where, like other war games, for the most part, you have a battle value. This is a numeric rating of how potent and how powerful something is. So if we agree to play a, a 4,000 or 5,000 point battle value game, I have, I've spent that on all infantry. I've spent that on just vehicles. You could go all in on just mechs. You could combine different assets on there. So in looking at that, battle mechs are broken up into light, medium, heavy, and assault type class mechs, starting out at the lower tonnage and going up to the higher tonnage. For the most part, the higher the tonnage, the bigger the mech, the more internal space for armor and weapons. But it cuts down on jump ability, speed, and movement. So if we look at a medium mech, so not a light mech, which is used for recon and skirmishing, not a heavy mech, which is a brawler, not an assault mech, which is just here's the tip of the spear, here's the primary assault. If we look at this idea that a medium mech is the workhorse, good balance of a uh, good matrix mix of armor, speed, jump capability, and weaponry, depending on the mech, it's about around 1,000. 1,000 battle value. Looking at infantry, there's different classes of infantry, and we'll, we'll delve more into that in a moment, but this foundation is important if you're thinking about the aspects of the game. On average, infantry will be anywhere from 50, 60, 70 battle value points. So how can something that's going to be, let's say, 60 battle value go up against 1,000 battle value? A lot depends on tactics, reach and location so the way mechs work is when you shoot at something in battle tech you start with a base it works off of a 2d6 system so essentially your spread is from 2 to 12 you begin with your gunnery skill of the mech or the the tank commander and that gunnery skill you add to it certain modifiers what's the range of the attack obviously long range is harder short range is easier are there any movement modifiers how fast is this target moving is there terrain is there cover and you arrive at a number that you have to equal or beat so you roll the dice you miss you miss if you hit then you roll on a chart to see based on the facing if it's a mech you could hit the left arm the right arm right leg left leg center torso left torso right torso and of course the ubiquitous headshot on there and you scratch off the armor bubbles. When you don't have any armor left, it goes to internal, and now it can damage critical components, weapons, ammo, the engine, the gyros, and it, it kind of blows through there. So a mech can take a lot of punishment with that. Infantry don't have armor in Battletech. They have a number value based on the size of the infantry platoon. So let's say you have an infantry platoon size of 30 men. When you take a hit, the damage that the infantry absorb, you start removing men. Not off the stand, but just kind of going down a checklist, and when you get to zero, the unit is gone. As you lose men at certain points of the losses, the damage output decreases because it represents, obviously, um, less mass attacks. Infantry in Battletech does not represent one single like laser attack on there it represents an entire group of of 
soldiers of infantry um, shooting missiles, shooting lasers, you know, essentially like bring it down, where a mech has a, a, a large laser, it's shooting one single large laser on there. So infantry health, the size as it goes down. Now infantry by itself, you start with the base infantry. It's not mechanized, it's not jump infantry, it's literally just, here you are, Welcome to the Planetary Defense Force, and here's your laser rifle, your machine gun, your short-range missile, your long-range missile on there. Uh, there's a couple of different weapon configurations that you can have, um, obviously affecting range, affecting damage, uh, different damage against different groups on there. So like a machine gun works against other infantry units and mechs where... Short-range missiles, long-range missiles can be fired against infantry units, but it's, it's not as devastating on there. So you look at the role and the weapons and what you want to provide. So that changes the battle value a little bit. So you start with a core battle value. How big do you want it? It goes up a little bit more based on the weapon. Then you can decide, do you want it to be jump infantry? Uh, this represents infantry that have some sort of jet pack or, depending on the tech level, inherent mobility it reduces the size a little bit but now it moves much faster on the table conventional infantry moves one hex a turn which is really really slow but it represents literally a mass of infantry moving forward so now you have a trade-off in size versus speed um, another side option is to include a vehicle or a form of transport with the mechs i mean excuse me with the infantry this adds to the battle value, but it's separate outside of it. Two examples would be uh, the Goblin Infantry Transport. Uh, this is essentially a heavy tank. It's got some machine guns. It's tracked. It's got a laser in the turret. The infantry get in. They drive forward. It has the regular speed of a tank. And then the in it protects the infantry. Warhammer 40,000, think Rhino for the comparison. Then your infantry pile out, and now they can fight along with that vehicle. Uh, another option would be a Karnov transport, where literally it's like an edge of tomorrow type transport. The infantry load in, the doors open, uh, they can hot drop out onto a mech, they can land, they can get out. That adds tremendous speed. So being combined arms, there's a lot of different options of how you're going to transport your mechs. If you're in a really defensive type position where you're going to dig in fortifications, then I'll just take base infantry. If I'm looking kind of like um, mobile utility, mobile suits to fight alongside my advancing mechs, then maybe I want goblins or I want air support or at the very least jump infantry. We can begin to see the customization here. Think combined arms. Now there's a further layer in that you can attach field guns to infantry, uh, basically light auto cannons, AC2, AC5. In Battletech, you'll see um, AC, which is an abbreviation for an autocannon, 2, 5, 10, 20. That's the n points of damage that it does if it hits. Obviously, an AC-20 is this massive cannon that's only going to be mounted on a tank or a, a mech. An AC-2 is just like a light field gun. It's only two points of damage. It's not, it's not man-portable. But it represents, uh, it can carry along on a carriage, or it can be kind of team assembled and pushed. So you can decide, do you want to add some sort of um, field gun to that? And in Battletech, it's represented by a single stand of infantry, often a counter or a hex base. You'll put on eight or nine infantry on there, so it's not going to be a specific number one-to-one. -one. The stand represents an element. You could say there's a field gun in there. A lot of us will have a little field gun miniature, maybe mounted on a penny, and we'll put that alongside of it. So you can give your infantry further battle value upgrades to there. So now you've made your decision. How does infantry fare against mechs? Depends. Depends on the mech, depends on the location, and depends on how they're engaging. When... A mech shoots at infantry. Um, it's assumed in the game that the infantry are in that hex or in that area of the gaming table that they operate, but they're just not standing there lined up in parade formation. Um, they're dispersed. They're spread out. Maybe they're a little bit dug in. Um, if they're in a forest, they're taking cover. So 
mech damage is significantly reduced. If you get hit with a laser or you get hit with missiles or um, a PPC cannon on there, it's not going to be the full damage that transfers. It's rounded down tremendously. So you might only kill two, three, or four mechs on there. I mean, excuse me, infantry on there. If they're caught in the open, a lot more damage is transferred. But infantry in terrain, in woods, or building, or ruins, um, they can take a lot of punishment from a mech. A lot of punishment on there, all the time while they're dishing out some interesting damage on there. Now, where things change is if infantry get hit, um, some mechs will carry machine guns or flamethrowers. And against similar mechs, so if my mech, uh, an example would be the Locust. This is a light mech. It has a medium laser, which is effective against other mechs and vehicles, and it has two machine guns. If I try to use my machine guns against your mech, the range is really close. It's not really going to do a lot of damage. It's not really very effective. But if you turn machine guns against infantry, the damage is actually multiplied. And in one or two or three shots, you can chew through an entire infantry platoon. Um, likewise, a flamethrower is just, just obliterates them on there with how it represents. So you'll see some mechs, if they have these anti-personnel weapons, they will look to utilize them. Some mechs, like the Vulcan uh, mech, is created specifically to deal with infantry and vehicles to kind of flush them out. Uh, you might also see these weapons on vehicles themselves pushing forward. So depending on the situation, infantry can be a real, real pain to get rid of, or they can just vanish um, in a moment. A, a game from a while ago, it was um, urban combat, city tech, so we're fighting in a city. I had a fire starter. Fire starter mech is a light mech, pretty fast, some decent armor, um, but it has a number of flamethrowers on it. And its primary um, design is, of course, to recon, being a light mech, but also to kind of burn forests and, and kind of deal with those aspects of warfare. Against infantry, it's crazy. And I ran up to this building where uh, there was three or four stands of infantry in the building. And I just, just sprayed the entire building, washed it in flame. Um, we rolled the dice just to see what would happen, but those infantry essentially were just annihilated on there. How do infantry attack? From the stand, you have a base attack skill based on the, the proficiency of the infantry, how well they're trained. And you can upgrade that for further batter, battle value. You roll to see if you're going to hit 2d6. Uh, of course, modified by range, modified by if the mech is moving. And uh, when you hit, you look at the damage that's done based on how many infantry you have left, and you break that up into groups and it transfers to separate damage rolls. Uh, this represents the fact that if a bunch of infantry are shooting at a giant mech, they might be aiming for one point, but they're just spraying all over the mech on there. This is where things get interesting. If it's against a mech that hasn't been damaged or still has an, a lot of armor left, it, it's going to damage the armor. It'll take off some armor value. But is it really a threat? To, to a mech. I mean, look, you never want to take any type of damage in any type of war game, absolutely. But you're, you're, you're pretty safe. But as Battletech, and this is what's interesting in Battletech, the mechs take a lot of punishment. As soon as your primary armor is bypassed, you move to internals, internal components. I mean, the armor's literally blasted away. Now, weapons are exposed, ammo's exposed, critical systems, life support, gyros, fusion engines... If you're hit again in that location, so if my left torso armor is gone and it's gone to internals, if I take another hit in that location, uh, we roll to see, did that hit happen on a critical component? And there's a chart, and you kind of figure that all out, and you roll to see what happens. By infantry spreading their damage over a spread of targets, you really don't want to get close to infantry if you have um, critical exposure on your mechs, because they very well could take out infantry. Uh, an example from another game, I was playing Inner Sphere versus Clans. Um, this is advancing in the timeline. Battletech has an ongoing timeline that you can play at various points. And without really getting into the narrative uh, in great, great detail, uh, the Clans are warriors that left the Inner Sphere. 
They've maintained advanced tech. They've refined their tech. So when they come back and invade to try and reconquer, their tech is is really, really advanced. Um, Warhammer 40K reference. Uh, think you're playing Imperial Guard and your opponent plays Admech. You know, the Mechanicus has all the secrets, all the tech, all the toys. So my mechs were going up against clans. Uh, the clans have tremendous firepower. There was a, a Vulture mech, which has good laser support, good missile support. And, and I had managed to damage it into one of the internals. And it's running past two groups of infantry that I had. And the infantry are just spraying it. And I was able to score an internal hit and literally destroy and explode the mech by chasing it down with infantry. So in the right circumstances, dug in, motivated, um, infantry are absolutely worth the battle value. Two side notes where infantry work really well also to be aware of tactically. They make really, really good spotters on the table. In Battletech with your long-range missiles, um, you can shoot directly. So I I can physically see the target. It's long-range. I fire those missiles. Long-range missiles can also be um, fired over indirectly, kind of on an arc. So if I know a target is behind something, meaning if you're behind a building and I can't see you, but another unit of mine on the table can see you, uh, that unit through communication, you know, radio, vox, um, vid communication, whatever it's going to be, can signal in and tell my other mech or unit, hey, there's actually uh, something behind this building. Here's the rough coordinates and fire. Of course, there's penalties, and, and the shot is much harder to make. But if you take a Karnov air transport, load up a stand of infantry, fly them in, turn one, drop them off in some cover on a high vantage point, they literally set up shop, set up base, and, and are radioing in coordinates for indirect fire. Really interesting. Uh, the last part of infantry, the swarm attack. This is do or die. The command is given to literally move into the base occupied, move into the hex occupied by a mech and start attacking the mech's legs uh, with explosives, with demo charges, with just um, lasers and missiles. It's a lot more potent and a lot more damaging to the mech. You can swarm vehicles. You can drop in with a Karnov, and I do this all the time. It's insane, the modifiers, but the motivation is there. You fly in two Karnovs. They're loaded up with infantry. You open those bay doors, fly over a mech, give the command, drop the ropes. You drop hundreds of men onto a mech. They're now swarming on the upper parts, so you're rolling on a different chart where you can literally blow through the head of a mech. And uh, what's interesting is the mech can try to shake them off. If the mech has hands, it can literally try and slap them off. Uh, In a last game, I swarmed the clans, uh, clan mech. And a lot of the clan mechs are ranged, so they don't have hands. They have arms, but often there's weapons in each hand. So I swarmed this mech. It might have been a vulture, too, or a mad cat. Uh, No hands. So how are you going to get the infantry off of the mech? Uh, Literally, the the clan mech had to just fall prone, literally body slam itself onto the ground for this. So it leads some interesting, interesting narrative. I love playing infantry in Battletech. And there have been games where it's infantry and tanks versus mechs. I, I love playing that because it represents amazing glory. Here we are thousands of years into the future, the pinnacle of battle tech technology, um, literally knights of a golden age, and they're not brave, right? They're just, they're not brave. Men are brave, you know, that, that immortal quote on there. And, and in my opinion, uh, Ben Affleck is the best Batman that's out there. True to the Dark Knight comics, he made Superman bleed. He should have done the deal on there with the Man of Steel, but then I know there'd be no Avengers and sequels and everything else but he's right about that when you have something that's mad power like superman not to go in a rant you're not brave you're not heroic it's the average person that is so i translate that to battle tech you just have infantry it's a bunch of infantry with some body armor and some machine guns or light lasers going up against lances of mechs 
And the, the, the heroic, especially in a city fight, when a mech is destroyed and it's broken and it's smoking and you've got your infantry swarming on top of it, planting that flag, uh, that's a narrative I really can't resist on there. 